by how to upload a file in Colab. Uh, is the problem sorted out there? My Jupyter notebook is not running, so I upload all my files in this. This I'm trying to okay. Click on that and then upload on data set. So import IOY. Why is uh, using these kind of things from google.colab and code files and then loading all those things. Okay, see uh, like if you are working in a google collab what has to be done, I, I have said you right, you can upload your files here. So it's connecting to a runtime, what I'll do, I'll again, okay fine, it has been connected to this. So it's connecting and once it will be connected, it, you can see up your files over here and that is very easy, I can see other things now here. So I'll be clicking just on that and if you have any CSV file with you, so in the downloads, let's say for any of the CSV files, I'm talking, uh, let's take even, uh, even that is just a CSV or an Excel file, let's say, so whatever the file it would be. It's no matter for what the file you are having, just uh, upload it there, right? So, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'll be selecting some random files from here. Okay. I'll go, yeah. So, like you can see, some tests, some train, and some full. So, I have uploaded this full, and uploaded file will be deleted when the runtime is recycled. That's okay. So, let's run this. see that that is being done so I can just read the heads and all those things so instead of writing it for file collab from Google collab import files and then going up with the stuff so it's better like if we just write other things and then we can just check up with all those things okay fine so you will be uh, completing your course on uh, by tomorrow and you'll be giving your IBM examinations on second Okay, so certifications you'll be getting from the Thieks by tomorrow and from the IBM examinations you'll be getting up by uh, second cell. Okay, so for that you'll have to uh, give the exam. Okay, fine. So uh, let's just come to our topics. So last day what we discussed. So today we are going to uh, deal with some files, uh, some uh, data sets and that will be working up now. So. We deal with the iris, and I was uh, I was saying that we'll be dealing up with the uh, graphics and all. Okay, fine, no issues. Hmm. So see, guys, for plotting up your data, when I say <coughs> when you focus on plottings and when you focus on graphics, if I say, right? So what we do basically. Hmm? We use uh, some libraries there to uh, plot our data. So, what are those libraries? So, the two important are the matplotlib and a C1 we used in the previous class. Okay. Now. So uh, these two things are very important, all right? I believe uh, you got these points. Okay. Now uh, we will have to import the dependencies when also we are importing other things. So these are the very five, or you say the four important modules or the libraries which we need to focus up when uh, writing for any of the, uh, uh, you say any of the exploratory data analysis or let's say when doing any of the EDA reports okay so, I'm 
Africa. One minute, just So that is fine. Run this and import all these dependencies. Now we'll be focusing on uh, looking onto the things. So what is matplotlib and what is seaborn? Right. These are the two important libraries which we focus on for printing our things, or printing our data in some graphical outputs, for bringing our data in some graphical output. Now, how we say that this bring our data in the graphical output, right? So once you have imported this uh, matplotlib, okay, so this gives you a 2D uh, plotting, 3D plotting with ML plot 3Ds and all, right? So how you plot the thing? Once you have imported this, up, let me just give you a clear idea of, right? Let's say this is my x, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so does my y, it is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Okay, uh, fine. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just write plt dot plot. Now what to be plotted? X and Y to be plotted, and plt dot show. These are very easy commands. Okay, guys, very easy one. Let you write X and Y, and then uh, write plt dot plot of X and Y, and just uh, show this. That's it. Okay, and run this. You can see a straight line. Why? Because for this one, the y value will be 2, for 2 it will be 4, for 3, 6, 4, 8 and 5, 10 and so on. It is very uh, similar, I think. Okay. It's very easy. So in matplotlib, you have bar plot, you have uh, horizontal bar plot, you have box plot, you have histogram, you have pie plots, you have uh, scatter plots, uh, you say it is, uh, there is something, stack plottings and uh, so these things are there. Okay. I will be going on. With the, some of the uh, functions, and we'll be giving you the uh, usage of this. Okay, fine. So, if you remember of the things of uh, like in the numpy, we did the sine graphs and the cos graphs and all. So, if you remember of those things, uh, then it would be I think it would be very clear to you that uh, if we write x is equals to np dot sine of uh, some numbers, right? So, uh, what to take? Let us take and arrange first of all so let's take an arrange from 0 to uh, np dot maths dot pi or let's write maths dot pi so in the intervals of 0.5 and here reporting math okay so what's going to be in the x so x will be a lot of numbers, right? It will be a lot of numbers of some 50, uh, with some starting from zero and uh, uh, ending up to the pi value of square, okay? And with some 0.5 intervals, okay? That's very clear to you, okay? Now I say that uh, I'm going to write a sine graph. So it would be np dot sine of x okay and so does i'll be also taking a cosine graph and that i'll be calling it as np dot cos of x okay now that's it being done so if i see my uh, sine it would be the sine of the first uh, or you say the sine of all those 50 numbers and similarly if i write print y sorry cosine it would be the cosine of all those 50 numbers okay now now to plot this up it's very easy you are writing that plot what you need to plot you need to plot the uh, right you need to plot only the let's say uh, the sine graph so what you need to do is first the values and then the sine right the value and the sine 1 so that is x and then the 
sine graph. So this is your sine graph. And what in the case of cos graph? So you'll plot x with respect to the cosine. To see the cos graph. Okay. So uh, very easy it is. Right. Similarly, you can take the tan even to find out the things respectively. Okay. You can even take up the things. Now, can we be very sure or can we be uh, very easily predicting the things? Not predicting up. Uh, right. Can we just uh, say that this is going to be the one point, this is going to be the second point. So for that, what we need to do, we'll need to locate exactly the points. So how can we do? Uh, here, just give a comma and take up like, uh, let's say, to plot this in some, uh, uh, let's say, in the orange colors, or let's say in the blue colors. So if I say orange, okay, fine. Let's say in the blue colors, okay. So you can see the difference that is in the blue colors now, okay. And also, I'll just give a comma, and again I'll write that I need to plot this x and sine again. But for now, I am going to plot this with, uh, let's say, green dots, okay? So, G O stands for the green dots. So, I can see that green dots can, uh, like uh, covers all the area, right? So, that is enough if we just see up with this uh, blue lines, that is like fine, right? Okay? Similarly, we can change here that. Uh, what kind of we want, right? Let's say we want some red da uh, this dashed lines and we can write accordingly. So it would be red and you can see some dash there are, okay? All right. We will see in small graphs that would be better uh, visible to look up with the things. Now, ca how can we differentiate like this is a cos graph or this is a sine graph, right? So what we need to do is we need to provide some labels. So we can write PHP dot label. And what label? Let's say x axis, so x label. So going to be uh, x is your y. So let's say these are the numbers. Or let's say these are the angles. E N G L P S. Okay. And similarly, we'll be plotting y label. And so does, I'll be also plotting a title, okay, one minute guys. Okay, fine. So, where we were? Yeah, so making a title. So, let's say this is a sign graph. Uh, so, I'll be just writing if this is a sign and this is going to be the graph. And that's it. So, this is a sign graph with some angles and some sine angles and so does the values and same would be the for the cos and I believe that this is fine. Okay. I believe this is very fine with this. So, like uh, with the cosine angles and all, if you want, cosine, uh, cosine graph with some cosine angles, and that's it. The cosine uh, angles, cosine angles, and the cosine graph, and it's very easy. Okay, guys, nice. All right. So, in this case, like you can see, similarly, you can write up for any logarithm values, or let's say we want for any such things, you can make up there and. That is all how we just plot up the data, right? So this is just a line plot you can say on, or just a very uh, cool thing, right? 
similarly what we can do guys uh, we can plot even uh, you say the histograms the bar plots and all those things right so uh, when we plot more than one data we need legend we need figures right what are legend legend are just a uh, you say labeling things right legend are just a labels uh, labels in the sense like let's say we are just printing both the graphs at once right let's say if we are printing this uh, plt dot plot or let's say we are going to write this is going to be a figure it is equals to plt dot figure okay so this is going to be a figure and we say that we are going to add some excess so fig dot add excess you don't write that is uh, the x and y the rows and the columns so we are saying that we are going to write 0 0 1 and 1 okay so what is the first plot we need to write okay whether uh, very the very first plotting we are going to write is x1 xs1 so xs1 will be plotting the plt or the xs dot plot and let's say uh, we are going to plot this uh, what is that x with respect to this uh, sign okay and also let's take in the some y okay in yellow colors and square in the dash okay so solid line uh, with yellow square markers and then the ax2 and i am taking this to be ax dot plot and this with the x and the cosine and i am saying this to be let's say green circles and some dash double dash okay so that's it guys very easy and now i'm going to plot a legend so what legend gives legend gives the labels we are writing okay so i'm going to write that labels are going to be sine graph and cosine graph this is going to be the labels okay this is the labels you are writing and uh, also you can give locations if you want like a lower limit a lower place or upper lay place and all so we'll just plot this let's see what comes so what you can see the sine graph and the cos graph okay sine graph and the cos graph now let's say that again i i, I just do one thing what i say that uh, my sign is going to be np dot sign of the x of first 10 numbers only and so does the cos is going to be changed okay so cosine is equals to np dot cosine of the x of some first 10 numbers okay oh sorry this is for cos X and Y must have same dimensions between the shapes 126 and 10. So we have got for the X and something is missing for the Y. Sign. okay uh, so the values are there as such for the x and so uh, for the y itself okay so sine and cosine has been defined up there and so does the things are very clear i believe okay so that is how we uh, do some plottings and go up with the things and similarly we even plot some bar plots some subplots like you want two plottings like uh, this you can see some uh, plotting in one side right so if you th you want this plotting in some separate plots you know separate plots means that uh, in some two plottings within one uh, window right this is another if we talk this is another window this is another window but if you want uh, these two plottings in one window itself then uh, you can write you can use the subplots and 
you can go with that to plot up the data accordingly okay that is also easy right uh, that is like uh, let's say you are going to plot something okay so what you can do is you can uh, use subplot and then you can use this plotting so let's say that copy and paste so uh, let's say that I'm going to uh, write some subplots. Okay. So plt dot subplot. Then what is being defined? First, you define your number of rows, number of columns, and the index. So you say that there should be two rows. There should be one column, and this is the first index. Got it? The two rows, one column. And this is first index. You write up the things, and let's say it to be here. Similarly, I'll write plt dot subplot, and here we'll write two rows, one column, and this is the second graph. So that's uh, that's a kind of a box you'll be getting up there got it my point okay fine so that is how we define subplots how we uh, write up the things okay fine so here what we do is uh, we'll be removing these commas you can also write 211 212 and that would also work even you can write 221 or like whatever you want right so you can add the subplots so what I will say that ax.1 not the plot I will be saying that ax whatever it is okay dot add the subplots and then I will be printing up these things so it would be ax1 dot add the subplot okay and uh, you could say that ax1 is even equals to your figure dot add subplots like because we have uh, initialized our figures as I right? we are going to write a figure so we can write ax1 to be figure dot add subplots and it would be with the two rows one column and the first index and then you plot up the things whatever you want right so uh, you can just write this as uh, let's say in this okay you can just plot it there now you define that uh, you are going to uh, write this again that ax2 would be equals to your figure dot add the subplots and this will be now 2 got it my point okay so this is going to be okay let me make it very clear so that you could see things clearly so it would be ax2 dot plot ax1 dot plot and that is being done okay Let's just run this let's see and you can see of the graph so inside one window inside one window we are making two multiple windows and then we are plotting up our data but okay so that is like how we plot up with the graphs okay you can even make it uh, like uh, inside so that is up to you how you want to make it like if you say that two rows two columns you need uh, then it will be possibly very different right so two columns with the things and here if you say two columns then obviously it will be different right so x's would be changed and uh, everything would be changed so that is uh, we have made for the one okay that is like this so that is subplot working and guys that is how it works right you can even go for the uh, the histograms, the subplots, and then you can find up the things. Okay. So there are various things. Like if I say that X is what you have plotted here. If I say that uh, uh, what to say? Mm -hmm. uh, let's just say that the X you have plotted, the A X A X whatever it is, right? So in the X S, if I write uh, the grid to be true, right? If I write the grid to be true, so wh what I can say that this x is x is not defined. Okay, so let's say uh, we are defining the x is 
I am saying that uh, whatever the figure you are going to plot or whatever the subplottings you are going to do, so let us define x and some other some other things. is being to do one two one two and okay fine so uh, like how it works is like let's say guys uh, if this is figure and this is going to be the x's we are going to plot and we are going to use some two plottings so subplots okay and then number of rows to be 2 let's say number of rows to be 1 and the columns to be let's say 2 okay so two columns we are going to plot up and we'll write that figure size is going to be 12 by 4 okay and that's fine PL uh, okay, this is PLP so what you can see some 2 boxes in one row right so you write the number of boxes to be 5 you will be seeing some 5 boxes similarly right okay so with 8 by 4 you will be getting some 5 boxes you write 8 by 8 like this it will be just going on increasing up the things in the values so we need only 2 boxes like that okay So these are the two boxes we require. Now, now they just change up the values and plot this again. Now, if I say the excess of zero and I plot some data here, let's say I'm plotting x to the power of three with x okay and I say the colors to be green and I say the line width okay line width you understand right so the width of the line would be what is being plotted so I say it to be 2 and I, uh, and I write x's dot grid of 0 to be true or even uh, like if I write just that x is dot grid to be true that's it that's also working so what do you have to change that x is of 0 so what you can see there is a graph in the first one with the, where the line with this 2 so if you make if you change the line width you can see the difference of the okay you can see of the difference if you write 0.4 you can find the difference there okay so that is line width you can even change the line colors so that is being green if you write anything it will be just changed up there so let's say we have written 2 so you can see up the line there so uh, grid you have made it to be true so you are getting the same thing right so you can make the titles let's say you are saying this excess of 0 uh, where it is yeah so excess of 0 dot set the title right now what to set the title let's say you are using uh, the default grid so you'll be getting the default grid at this okay now if you're changing your grid okay you're changing your grid how let's take the uh, the uh, second box right let's talk about the second box now we are going to edit in the second box so let's talk about that okay here if we are saying so we have two axes right the 0 and then 1 so if excess of 1 we are plotting so what to plot let's say x with comparison of the exponential values of the x and here I want some red uh, colors and here I write excess of 1 dot the grid to be true 
or in the true we can just write the grid colors to be changed so let's say we are saying the grid colors to be blue okay and the line width to be again 2 or 1 and the line style to be dashed dash line style to be dash you write this one dot set the title and we can write some custom grid and you can see the difference the custom grid okay so the plottings between the things how you plot up the data right and one more so uh, I hope you would have seen other things right so here if I write that I am going to plot some different axis right now so if I write a x with plot of let's say x with comparison to np dot sign of x and with uh, let's say blue okay so with blue colors and excess of 2 dot grid and let's say the color of the grid to be if it is blue then in the back let's say to be green or sand given right or the magnet or anything so let's say and the line width to be 2 and the line style to be and excess of 2 will be sign graph so what i have to change it here i will have to make it 3 and then i can plot this things and you can see of the graph accordingly right so in place of sign if i write as uh, pink so you can see the difference here if you don't write the color it would be as uh, original it was right and that is being formatted and being done so line styles we are using the grids we are using other things you use dash it would be something like this and it works accordingly okay so similarly you can even create the cause graphs uh, and all right whatever you want and you can create in multiple subplots and all okay i believe these things are very clear to you that how to write up the things how to make access how to plot up the data accordingly and so that's the things to be done there all right so i'm moving next okay so that is how we uh, plot up the things you can uh, plot even uh, more than in one particular thing right that is you can plot even more than one graph in a particular window and that that is easy one okay now now i'll give you a description of how you can set your labels set your labels mean that uh, how you can set the x labels y labels and all such things okay so uh, what we can do is uh, i believe that uh, completing class tomorrow will not complete the whole course so what we'll do is we'll complete class at uh, 2nd september okay so we'll be completing it by 2nd september okay fine so now uh, we are going to understand the ticks now what are ticks exactly so this function takes a list of object as your argument and it makes the labeling as the same as you want for the uh, as you want for your graph right so let's say that uh, i'm going to write or define my x as an arrange of let's say from 0 to max dot pi again multiplying it by 2 and with 0 0.05 with the same things okay so this is going to be my x one minute
Okay. Hmm. So this is going to be my x. And again, I'm going to define my figures. Okay. And I'm going to say that I'm going to write uh, plt dot figure and not figure it's figure. And that's it. Okay. So this is going to be the figure. And I'm going to write my x's. That is a x would be the figure dot add the x's and now the x's will be defined up there okay so x's means that like from where you to define up the, uh, all the boxes sizes uh, right so 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 and i say now y to be np dot cos of this x okay so and plotting this the x and the y that's it so this is the graph you will be seeing up there now if i write the labels and now what is the main thing i want to change my text in place of 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 what i want to write i want to write something else 1 2 3 0 in some uh, letters i want to write on that okay so i'll say that ax dot set the x ticks that is the x 0 1 2 3 i need to change those things okay so i want to uh, set this ticks as 0 2 4 6 i could see only the it's going from 0 to 6 so it could be 0 2 4 and 6 if, if you want even you can change your y ticks set your y ticks you see my starting from minus 1 and going to uh, going till the 1 so you, you write up the things that you only want minus 1 you need uh, 0 and you only need 1 that will be changed that is from minus 1 0 1 and it's 0 2 4 6 and now you say that you need to set your x tick labels and you need to write this as 0, 1, sorry, this is 2, 4, and 6. And let's say just to show up the things. So, can you see the graph? It's being 0, 2, 4, and 6. Similarly, if I write axt dot plot and I plot x with the sine of x, so you can see of the things. You can make even the uh, labels to find out the graphs, uh, like to find out the differences between the two lines to separate up these things. Okay, that is the use of the labels. I believe that is clear. So only you are there. Okay, fine. All right. So I believe things are very clear, right? You can set the labels. You can write uh, the index, and you can do whatever you need to do in the plotting. Okay. So that is fine. Now we are going to understand about the uh, bar plots. Okay. Now let's say. So, in case of a bar plot, let's just say that to very first thing to write the figures we are going to plot. So, we are going to plot the figure, uh, define this, and let's say you are going to have x's, air x's, 0, 0, 1, and Okay, and now, so let's say we are taking some technologies, let it be data science, let it be artificial intelligence, let it be Cyber security, let it be big 
data Hadoop or let it be only big data or let it be uh, this uh, what is this called as cloud computing okay so let us take some of the basic trends nowadays in the technologies okay and let's say the learners behind this technologies so in the data science we can say that there is almost some good numbers so taking it from the hundred if we just compare the students from the hundred what i will say that uh, from hundred i could say that uh, the percentage in the data frame could be uh, or uh, i can give you a probability that there could be some 35 okay and not not 35 we could say even 40 uh, yeah 35 is better so for the artificial intelligence you could say it's going to be 30 for the cyber security we could say 28 for uh, big data we could say a data science could be uh, more than that even right big data we could say 229 cloud computing it's uh, it's going in a good approach for 32 and that's right uh, we made uh, some basic things okay now since this is a bar graph and we are making some excess so we can just write that this is going to be the bar graph i'm plotting a bar graph and uh, plotting it between the technologies and the learners and it's showing to you so this is the graph so i can see that the, the labels are been okay so labels have been just uh, compressed or you can say this has been just uh, given away so what i will do it's fix size i'll be increasing it by 10 by 8 and i could see that now this is quite good or even if I say 8 by 8, 8 by 5, still this is better. What more you can do is you can say while plotting you can say the colors to be red. This will be a completely red graph. And you can even change the width. So you say the width. And you define the width. So let's say you give it as 1.111 1 and this is 0.5. So it will be changed. While it is there, hmm. width is width as. Right, so it is 0.25. You can manually change one by one if you like. Want to change only some uh, some of the graphs, some of the bits. You can manually change them. Okay, so I, I believe that this is clear to you, right? So if you don't write, uh, what is the by default where you can see up there? Not not even 50. It's around 75. Right, and uh, let's just change this. Let's make to white, and we can see some graphs but uh, with no colors. And that is how your graph works. Okay, you can take oranges, you can take yellow, such things would be. Can take it up there. Moving to the next, so this is like the bar plotting, guys. Okay, similarly, we even plot the histogram. So if we just plot the histogram of this, if we write that we are going to plot uh, 
uh, histogram so that will be a x dot a histogram a histogram of technologies and if you say the histogram of technology and learners so what will be the difference uh, what will be the error that is wins must increase right the wins must be increasing so let's say you define your bins so let's say you define your bins okay uh, we have some five Five zero 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 five so zero hundred fifty and ten. Okay. So let's take some random numbers, uh, some kind of. Okay, so some numbers there and. A values and let's say the wins could be 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. So you could see a histogram there. Okay. So this kind of the things with starting of zeros and other things. So you can take, you can change the ticks, you can from this uh, you can change the y labels and the things show up there okay so you write that y label could be the uh, number of lunch similarly if I write x dot p set x level and I say this would be the technologies uh, difference or let's say ages so just taking a Age, age would not give you a good thing because there we have 100 also right so let this take <laughs> okay so that is ages or if you want you can change it right that is ax dot set px ticks and you can say that like you want from this 5 or let's say from 10 20 40 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So accordingly, the 80 is not required, I think. So 70 uh, works out done. Okay? So we'll uh, get at the things accordingly. This is your pin, right? Uh, this is your the plotting start from 0 and that will be a fine plot so I can say right so age is from 0 to 70 and then so does the values coming up right so I believe that things should be clear to you right okay so how to plot up with the data uh, using the matplotlib how to graphically present your things and 
scatter and it goes with all so we can even do a, a scatter plotting right if you remember that what what are the learners so learners are the values if i plot this plp dot plot uh, this what x and y with some red dots so it is okay x is this and y is this so let's say np dot sign of x of those five numbers and np dot cos of x of those five numbers so this could be uh, like a graph there the np dot sign of those five numbers with the np dot cos of those five numbers and this is like uh, scatter plotting you are getting up right also you can say plp dot plot this np dot cos of from the 5 to 10 and then you can write np dot sign of from the 5 to 10 and in some green triangles You can get you know, things right. So starting from there, coming in there, and then doing the reference to all, and you can set up the things right. That is like PLP dot set the axis, set the fix. So uh, let's say this is the figure you are making up. Okay, and. the axis okay so this would be a x dot plot a x dot plot and a x dot set fix set x fix so uh, let's take from 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay and then 1 okay and so does set y takes 0 0.5 to 1 and you can see of the value or even you can just write 1 and 1.5 here also you can write 1 and 1.5 and you can see of the graph so starting from 1 going till 1 starting from 1 going till 1 and that will be a graph okay so that is the important of text and all. Uh, so I believe that this would be clear. Moreover, they will be getting more videos on this uh, matplotlib. Uh, 